Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update brought to you by Pepperstone on Thursday the 7th of February 2019. I'm Darren Sinden and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. Okay, let's kick off with a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. Uh, with the Chinese New Year now in full swing, a uh, relatively quiet session uh, on the world's foreign exchanges over the last 24 hours. However, one or two points of interest still worth flagging up. Uh, the Australian dollar seems to have settled down after its sharp reversal following uh, yeah, Governor Lowe's uh, speech on interest rates recently. The New Zealand dollar, however, has continued to weaken down by a further 0.36% against uh, the, its US rival, uh, bringing its weekly losses to a whopping 2.44%. So no bottom in sight for the Kiwi just yet. Uh, the US dollar was on the front foot elsewhere as well, taking money off of near neighbours Canada uh, with a 0.23% gain against the Canadian dollar and a 0.14% move higher uh, against the Mexican peso. But it did better still. Uh, moving further south in uh, Latin America proper, where it took 0.78% off of the Brazilian real. So the dollar's really uh, eating into recent gains made by the real. Dollar index for its part, trading at 96.44, shortly before we recorded the video, modestly better on the session. Uh, it obviously has been trending higher this week, um, and uh, so we'd have to begrudgingly say that it has taken its uh, cue from the market, but perhaps not in the direction that many of us were expecting. OK, what's on the calendar then? Events that may move the markets today. Uh, pretty busy calendar. We've already had uh, a speech uh, first thing this morning from the Fed Chair Jerome Powell. We'll look at that in a bit more detail momentarily. Uh, we've also had leading economic index data out of Japan for the month of December. Uh, bang in line with consensus forecast. Uh, well down though uh, on the prior reads. Uh, to come then at 7am GMT we shall have industrial production data out of Germany for the month of December following on from factory orders data earlier in the week. And then at 9am GMT uh, the first of a couple of uh, ECB uh, announcements today. First of all their economic bulletin a look at the state of play and health in the the view of the ECB of the European economy. Then at 10 a.m. we stay in Europe uh, for a meeting between Theresa May and Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, hoping obviously there Theresa May to try and find some wiggle room from uh, the Europeans over the Brexit plan. And at 10 a.m. Uh, the European Commission releases its own economic growth forecasts uh, and that's a chance to see how uh, the powers that be in Brussels uh, believe the European economy will grow going forward. At 12am, perhaps the most important event of the day, uh, the Bank of England meets to decide on interest rates. Uh, we're not expecting any changes to interest rate policies or interest rates proper today. Uh, there may be some discussion of policy and um, what's going to happen post-Brexit, although obviously that'll be coloured by the fact we don't know quite what Brexit's going to be. Uh, we'll also have the release of minutes of the meeting and the Bank of England's quarterly inflation report to accompany that. And then at uh, 12.30, Mark Carney uh, will actually give a speech. Following on from the uh, Bank of England's uh, release at 12.15, and before Mark Carney, we shall hear from ECB board member Mersch uh, in a second uh, central bank speech of the day crossing over the atlantic at 1330 we'll have weekly initial jobless claims from the usa and that'll be followed at 1430 by the last of the day central bank speeches uh, fred board member clarida will be speaking and then we have a significant pause until 2330 this evening when we'll see overall household spending data out of japan for the month of december OK, breaking news and comment then that's caught my eye overnight. <clears throat> First of all, uh, the US trade deficit moved to its lowest level for six months in November, helped by a drop off in trade with China. So at some levels, uh, tariffs are helping to reduce uh, the, the trade issues that uh, uh, the US faces. But of course, it's a very blunt tool. Uh, and the question has to be asked, at what cost uh, has that uh, made to the, the wider US industrial and commercial sector? Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell in a speech last night highlighted sluggish productivity and the wealth and income inequality gap uh, in America as the biggest challenges facing the US in the next decade and to fix that uh, or to go some way towards fixing that he argued for increased labour force participation and mobility. And despite a faltering economy, Italian bonds are still in demand, it seems. Uh, a 30 year sale yesterday uh, was five times oversubscribed, and there were bids for 41 billion euros worth of paper uh, versus just 8 billion 
a euro's worth issued by the Italian government. So not doesn't necessarily mean that there are there were literally five times as many buyers, but a good uh, cover to issue ratio is a healthy sign for a bond market. So not all bad news for Italy there. Okay, food for thought, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. Uh, and really, I just wanted to have a look at uh, the state of US crude oil exports. America, of course, historically was once one of the world's biggest uh, crude oil importers. Uh, production has been steadily increasing in the country over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, and just before Christmas, uh, the US inched into uh, net exporter territory. This line here plotting the net differential between imports and exports of crude oil into the States. It dips below zero and the US becomes a net exporter. And the table on the right hand side, the chart on the right hand side, shows the destination uh, for US crude oil exported from the Gulf Coast refineries and ports there uh, on the Gulf of Mexico. No surprise perhaps to find that China is the biggest uh, importer of US crude. Perhaps um, a little bit surprising to find the UK itself uh, an oil producer uh, being in the top four. Uh, of uh, importers of US crude oil. Anyway, some interesting data here uh, and uh, I'm sure that we'll be talking uh, in the future about uh, the US as a crude oil exporter, a crude oil and gas exporter I should say as well. Okay, risk warning time. Please do take a moment to read this risk warning. Trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business if you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of leveraged products for you then please do contact your Peverstone account representative and as I say do take the time to read this risk warning thoroughly. Thank you for your time today.